Hi, I'm Julie from Cultures for Health. Today we're going to talk about how to care for your sourdough starter. Now working with sourdough is actually much easier than many people realize. Keep in mind, people worked with sourdough every day for thousands of years, long before there were little packets of commercial yeast available in the grocery store. Now sourdough actually only requires a couple of things. It needs to be fed with flour and water on a regular basis. It needs a warm spot to sit and it needs to be in a safe spot free of things that might contaminate it, um, like bugs or um, other culturing food, something like that. So today I'm going to show you how to accomplish all of those tasks and to make this process as easy as possible. So first let's talk about feeding your sourdough starter. Now when you feed your sourdough starter, there are a couple of ways to do this. One is to weigh out the ingredients and the second is to measure out the ingredients. And we're going to talk about both. I'm going to demonstrate measuring out the ingredients though with measuring cups since that's generally what most people have available. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is a container to put our sourdough in. Now, when you feed sourdough, you allow it to proof, which is a term that refers to allowing the yeast and bacteria to develop. Um, it's also referred to sometimes as letting the sourdough starter rise or ferment or culture. So um, this container, I like this container because I got this from a restaurant supply store. Um, it's big, it's easy to clean. It's got this nice lid that you can just set on top and you don't actually have to snap down or you can if you want to. And it's square so it fits in the refrigerator really well. Um, but you can use just about any container you'd like. Um, glass is great, plastic is fine as long as it doesn't have any scratches or anything or extra bacteria might be hiding. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and First, add some sourdough starter. Now, if you are weighing out your ingredients, you'd want to get a tear weight on your container, on your scale, of course, um, and weigh out your sourdough starter. Since we're going to be using the measuring method today, um, I'm going to measure out about a half a cup of sourdough starter. Oh, that's going to go a little slowly. Okay. Here we go. There we go. Maybe a little more than a half a cup. Okay. Set that off to the side there. Okay, and then the next step is going to be to add water. Now, when you are working with um, a scale, you'll be using equal parts of sourdough starter, water, and flour. So if you have, for example, 25 grams of, of sourdough starter, you'd want to add 25 grams of water and 25 grams of flour. If you don't have a kitchen scale handy and you need to use measuring cups, though, this is how you do it. You're going to use one part of sourdough starter, one part of water, so we're going to go ahead and add half a cup of water. Okay. And then we're going to use a little less than two parts of flour. So we had a half a cup of sourdough starter, um, a half a cup of water, and we're going to use a little less than a cup of flour. Okay. Now, the good news is once you get this formula down, you can stick with it. There's no need to change the formula at all. Yeah, a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so it's all in your container, and you want to go ahead and stir it together. Try to drip sourdough starter all over my table. You want to give this a good stir. You want to make sure that the sourdough starter is fully incorporated into the flour and the water. You also want to incorporate some air. This air is very helpful in this process. You want to make sure there isn't flour stuck to the bottom of the container. The nice thing about these clear containers is you can actually lift them up and look at the bottom of your container if you need to, um, to determine that there's not extra flour sitting down there. Okay, so this is all mixed together now. Alright, let's grab a plate. So I ended up with sticky sourdough starter all over my table. Okay, so you want to go ahead and throw a lid on this. Um, you don't want a very tight lid though because during this process the sourdough starter is going to create gas as it feeds on the flour and water and that gas needs to go somewhere and if you put a tight lid it's, it's just not helpful to the process at all. Um, so just lightly set a lid on here. The alternative if you don't have a lid maybe you're just doing this in like a bowl on your counter is to go ahead and throw like a, a towel over it something like that um, or a plate as long as there's some gaps for air to get out. Um, you want to just be keeping out invaders, you know, maybe if you have fruit flies or ants, if you're, it's during the summer, um, little kids, something like that. Now you want to find a warm, safe place for this to sit. Um, now sourdough likes temperatures generally between about 70 and 85 degrees. 
They do okay with temperatures down into you know the 65 degree range, but it tends to slow the process down the cooler you get. Um, so try to find a fairly warm spot in your house. Maybe your kitchen stays a little bit warmer than the rest of your house. On top of your refrigerator might be a good spot. Heat rises, tops of the fridge is usually fairly warm, um, a high shelf in your living room, something like that. Um, don't be afraid to put this in your living room. It's a great conversation piece. So. Now you want to let the sourdough go ahead and sit and proof for generally eight to 12 hours. The length of time you wanna let the sourdough sit after feeding it is very dependent on your sourdough starter though and how warm your house is. Um, but that sounds more complicated than it actually is. What you wanna do is just keep an eye on this guy after about four hours um, so you can see when it's ready to be fed again. Let me show you an example here. I have some sourdough starter that I fed about five hours ago. It's the same sourdough starter, same mother culture. Just added some in and mixed in some flour and water. As you can see, it's very bubbly. Um, also, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see the side very well, but there is a whole bunch of bubbles here, lots and lots of bubbles. Um, this has actually doubled in size in the last five hours is where there's lots of air in here. Um, so this is happy, well-proofed sourdough starter. Um, so this is what you wanna go for. And once it's got to this point, it's time to feed the sourdough starter again. Um, many sourdough starters can go between 8 to 12 hours before being fed again. Um, a few varieties um, of starter, for example, like an Alaskan starter, something like that. Um, we have a number of varieties on our site, but like the Alaskan starter proofs a little more quickly, so does the New Zealand rye, I believe. Um, so sometimes you'll get a starter that proofs more quickly than this. So now that your sourdough starter has grown this much, you can go ahead and feed it again. And you use those same proportions you did last time. So if you're using a scale, you're gonna do equal amounts of sourdough starter, flour and water. If you're using measuring cups, you're going to do one part sourdough starter to one part water to a little less than two parts flours. Um, now, let's talk about what, when you feed your sourdough starter. Um, the feeding a sourdough starter has a couple of purposes. One. You want to keep your sourdough starter healthy and give it food to eat. If sourdough starter doesn't get enough to eat or it runs out of food or you let it sit and proof too long, um, it gets a brown liquid layer on top. And I'm going to show you a picture of that now. Um, this is a picture of a sourdough starter that simply has sat too long. Um, it, whether it was in the fridge or on the counter, it's run out of food, it's not happy, and it needs to be fed as soon as possible. You want to go ahead and just pour that liquid layer off and feed it just as I showed you. Now, how often do you feed? Uh, depends on where your sourdough starter is being kept. So if you are working with your sourdough starter every day or every couple of days during the week, it might be best for you to keep your sourdough on the counter. And you can do that in a container just like this. Just put the lid on it. Um, the only caveat is that your starter is going to need to be fed probably twice a day. Um, you may be able to get away with once a day if your house isn't too warm, but just keep an eye on it. Make sure it's bubbling reliably and that it's not getting that dark liquid layer on top. If you are not going to bake with your um, sourdough starter on a, a very regular basis, maybe only once a week or once every few weeks, then you're better off keeping your starter in the refrigerator. Um, so you can go ahead and put this container in the refrigerator or you can store a small amount of sourdough starter in your fridge in like a mason jar with a, a lid on it. Now if you're keeping your sourdough starter in the refrigerator, and you're only maybe going to bake with it once a month or something, you wanna make sure you feed your sourdough starter weekly. So pull it out of the fridge and feed it just like I showed you, let it sit on the counter for a few hours, put it back in the fridge. Um, the fridge is very helpful because it puts the sourdough starter into a state of hibernation. It slows down the rate at which the bacteria and yeast are growing, and so it can survive a lot longer between feedings. Um, we generally recommend though, making sure you're feeding it at least once a week. Now the only downside with having your sourdough starter in the refrigerator is that state of hibernation means your sourdough starter coming out of the fridge is not ready to bake bread. You need to get your sourdough starter um, woken back up, you need to get those yeast and bacteria active again. And so when you're ready to bake bread, you're gonna pull your sourdough starter out of the fridge, you're going to feed the sourdough starter just as I showed you three times before you bake bread. So let me give you an example. Um, if you pull your sourdough starter out of the fridge on a Wednesday night when you get home from work and go ahead and feed it, you want to feed it again on Thursday morning. You want to feed it again on Thursday night. And Friday morning, your sourdough starter will be ready to bake bread for you. So it's really not too hard. It just takes a little bit of advanced planning. 
making sure your sourdough starter is fully out of a state of hibernation and the yeast and bacteria are at their optimal level of activity is crucial though because those yeast and bacteria are ultimately what is going to create the gas that's going to make your sourdough starter rise and going to give you nice fluffy bread and not some dense hard rock and make your family much happier. So just remember, sourdough starter can be kept on the counter of the fridge, but it needs to be fed, fed regularly. It needs to be kept in a warm spot if it's proofing. Um, you're wanting that yeast and bacteria to develop. If you're keeping it in the refrigerator, make sure you're feeding it at least once a week, or that you're pulling it out and working with it, and you wanna give yourself three feedings before baking bread. Now check out our website at culturesforhealth.com. We have lots of videos, um, including a video on how to make a basic loaf of sourdough bread and going over that process again of getting that sourdough active and happy prior to making bread. Um, we also have recipes, ideas, and tips. I'm Julie from Cultures for Health, where healthy food starts.